Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCI12933 here, and I've got a lot of great exam tips for both UCCNA and CCNP candidates in today's video. The biggest tip that I'm going to give you, and we're going to see this on live equipment in just a moment, I call to know or not to know. So we'll see exactly what I mean by that in just a moment. If you would just give me a moment here, I'd like to invite you to come out to the website and join us live and online in January 2011 for a live CCNA Mastermind webinar. I have these on demand so you can watch them anytime you want as well. That's been very popular, but a lot of you like a live course. I like teaching one, and this also gives us a chance to pay it forward to the Central Virginia Food Bank. No matter where you are in the world, I'm running one of these live and online so your time zone will be in the evening hours and you do not have to take time off from work to attend. Also, you'll find the tuition to be very reasonable. You get 20 hours of live, concentrated CCNA instruction from yours truly, and someone who needs a meal gets one. So it's definitely a good deal all the way around. Come on out to the website and check that out. And if you're seeing that after January, 2011, I invite you to come on out because we are going to make that a regular feature so we can pay it forward and help some folks out. Now, let's take a look at a very basic config that I've got here. I'm going to scroll up just a bit so you can see what I did here. Simply put one IP route command in, and of course that's to create a static route. We know that when we see all zeros here, it's a default static route. And when you put an interface here, remind me, is that the local routers serial one or the remote routers serial one? See, I told you this would be interesting. It's a pop quiz. Serial one is going to be your local routers exit interface. If you specify an interface, it's the local routers. If you specify an IP address, that has to be the IP address of the next top router. What would happen though if we had two of these routes and then we decided we wanted to take one off, whether that happened on the exam or in the real world? And I've also got some tips for you there on iOS help, but let's take a look here at the IP route command to begin with. And we know, let me actually run the iOS help there, because the reason I wanted to mention iOS help here is that I do get quite a few emails that while they certainly don't mention specific exam questions, which we all know is wrong, I am asked pretty often, well, you know, if I use iOS help in a simulator and it doesn't work or I use it in the wrong place, uh, you know, am I going to lose points? No, you're not going to get penalized for using iOS help. Uh, I'm not sure I would expect a full-blown version of that in any exam simulator, you know, whether you buy that from somebody else or you're talking about the exact, uh, the actual exam day itself. But again, you're not going to be penalized for typing a question mark and seeing what your options are from that point. So we know if we put a forwarding router's address here, it's got to be the next hop IP address. So what I did here is on purpose, I promise, I put the local router serial zero interface. And the router tells us, hey, that's an invalid next hop address. And I love the parentheses here. It's like it's whispering to you, hey, it's this router. Uh, so we can't use that one. I would not expect the exam, of course, to tell you that that's going to be an invalid next hop. I think we better know that. So let's put dot two here. And you'll notice that we didn't get any kind of error message there. And when we just typed in a static default route that wasn't particularly legal, uh, the router told us immediately. So we didn't get a message here. So what do you think we're going to see when we take a look at the IP routing table and at the config? Did we overwrite something here? Because that's a question I'm asked often. You know, am I overwriting there? Well, you're not overwriting because you can have more than one static default route on a router. And if you run show IP route, it looks like we're actually going to see both of them here in the routing table. So let's say that you put that in and you think, ah, you know, I really wish I hadn't done that. 99 out of 100 times, and we know there's always an exception, but 99 out of 100 times you can remove a command just by putting the word no in front of it. And I know some of you are already thinking, now I've got to type no IP route 0000, etc. You don't have to. I'm not huge on keyboard shortcuts like knowing every single one and knowing the command to go back one cursor, you know, or one, uh, one letter. But there is a couple, is one that I really like to use, I should say, and that's the up arrow, because that's going to go through your history of commands. So when I did the up arrow, you'll notice that changed from two to one. I'm going through my last couple of commands. 
So that is pretty cool. I really like that one because now all you got to do is move the cursor to the front of the line and you just type the word no and you're all set. Except you can't just hit the back key. You can't hit the backspace key because when you do that you can see that things start disappearing. What you either have to do is use your arrow keys to kind of go all the way to the front of the line or my other favorite keyboard shortcut is control A. Notice the cursor moved all the way to the front of the line and now I just have to type no and then I'm done. So you can always save that of course as you should and we'll check the routing table in a moment but again you're not going to be penalized for using iOS help on a Cisco exam and whether you're on a Cisco exam simulator or a live Cisco router in a production network or your home lab when you enter something in like that if you think you've got multiple commands like multiple frame relay map commands that kind of thing I would do an ocular scan as we call it I would take a look at it and then I would simply go in and use that no option to remove any commands that I didn't want and we can see right here that one IP route command is gone the one we just put in and we run show IP route and everything is right back where it was so again do not fear the no option there I think some people are actually I know uh, some of my bulldogs out there get a little nervous at the beginning well I don't know if I want to type no in here etc but again that is the simplest way to negate a command with a Cisco router don't be afraid of the word no there and don't be afraid of iOS help plenty of additional videos coming up soon here on the YouTube channel and on all the sites that carry my YouTube videos I thank you for that again I'm Chris Brandt CCIE 12933